this is the format that uh, we have for today. All right. We will first talk about current affairs. Uh, Alan will share an, art, an article that is in the recent news and talk about the implications. We will then go into a case study. And after that, I'm, I'm looking forward to this segment, especially because it talks about the role of the financial planning advisor in light of the case study. But more than that, also Alan will expand more about why financial planners and advice, advisors need to be feeling proud about the kind of position that you play yes, right, for your clients. So without further ado, I want to uh, thank Alan for being with us uh, today once again. And uh, Alan, over to you. So the the first of all is the the recent article, right? Okay, yeah. Yes, correct. But before the recent article, I want to thank uh, uh, Samuel for inviting me uh, again for this uh, conversation. Now, uh, uh, I I share the same sentiments as uh, Samuel talking about relevance. Uh, that's very important. Just share one one example about how relevance is so important. Uh. As financial advisors, uh, I don't need to be the best. All I need is to be the re to be relevant. You might think this is a joke. I share with you one military history. World War One, France was the among the top country in the world uh, in the military strength. Uh, they they perfected uh, trench warfare. Meaning to say that they duck in. That meant they have a soldier there having their gun pointing towards the enemy. They are very good. World War One, who was the loser? The Germans. All right. Now, about, about 20 years later, we saw World War II. France, because of their arrogance, uh, they never wanted to change the way they fight the war. They thought that if Germany come as a French army, with our 200 years of tradition, we will easily defeat the German within a week. Guess what happened within a week? The German overrun the France just like that and took over the entire France country. Uh. And then we see that the iconic picture where Hitler uh, walked through uh, the Eiffel Tower. In terms of purposes, uh, why did France lose the war within a week? The whole big country of France, you know, with our 200 years of uh, history and uh, military college uh, tradition. Why? Because of relevance. They forgot uh, the Germans uh, had bring up the, the tank. So however good your trench warfare is a uh, human, uh, you can't fight with the tank. The tank overrun. Uh, the Germans, during the 20 years, they perfected that the, the tank warfare. They call it the Berserk the uh, 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 Unit, the, the, the Berserk uh, 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 Division. Now, this is one example uh, that you can be the best in your field, uh, but if your field is irrelevant to the market, uh, you'll be dead. Uh. So mm. therefore, this brings us to the very topic today where Samuel invited me to talk about current affairs. Uh, you might think, hey, Alan, I'm a financial advisor. <laughs> why, why current affairs? Uh, let me just give you a piece of advice as a, a as a person about 20 odd years in this industry, oversee education. Uh, if you don't understand current affairs, uh, all right, your financial plan uh, could someday end up to become a financial problem for your client. All right. So is that important? Now let's let's take a look about what uh the, the particular piece of news uh, that I share with mm -hmm. Samuel. Okay, I will I will do a share screen. Yeah, please. Right, I'm going to do a share screen. Mm. Okay, come. And actually, Alan, this is uh, mm. you know one very common thing, mm. right? Um, yeah. A lot of people mm. seems to think that you know we are, mm. we are here in Singapore, or mm. in my case, we're here in Australia, right? Mm. Uh, what has Donald Trump winning or losing, you know, or <laughs> Biden and Trump, you know, yeah. winning or losing the election? What what has that got to do with us over here, right? Mm. So so I think. Um, you know, guys, in this conversation, we we do talk quite a bit about, you know, current affairs and geopolitics because there is really uh, that implication uh, there is, uh, right? So, yeah, Alan, please. Yes, correct. Right. Very good. Uh, what Samuel said is, is very real. Uh, Singapore, no matter what, we are a small country. We don't have natural resources. Uh, we are order takers. Uh. Of course, we try very hard to be order maker or order or other shaker like the like United States or China. But we try very hard. Lah. Now, let's take a look at this particular article lah, about uh, Shell Singapore to repurpose core business downside uh, Pulau Bukom refinery in a low carbon shape. Now, this particular information came out and then uh, I just shared with Samuel and shared with some of my few close friends as well as uh, some strategic clients that I have. All right. 
Now, what, what, what does it mean? What does it mean? This is a situation over here. This is a situation over here. Shell Singapore said on Tuesday, November the 10th, that plans to repurpose its core business and half its crude uh, processing capacity at uh, Pura Pukong. Now, for those of you who are not uh, in Singapore, or rather not Singaporean, um, Pura Pukong is an island. Uh, it's man-made one. It's a man-made island uh, um, by the first generation of the Singapore leaders. And, and, all right, you know, the, it's an island that built up uh, to facilitate the uh, oil refinery uh, industry. Now, you might say that, hey, Alan, what's so great about oil refinery industry? Uh, oil refinery industry contribute about 5% of our Singapore GDP. Now, just to give you some perspective, uh, uh, the Singapore uh, GDP uh, for 2019 uh, means how much we produce uh, as a country. Uh, about 500 million. Uh, it's about 500 million. Billion. Sorry, uh, it's, sorry, it's 500 billion. 500 yeah, billion. billion. Sorry, it's 500 billion. 500 billion, sorry. All right, 500 billion in 2019. All right. And uh, 5% of 500 billion uh, is about 2.5 billion. Uh. 2.5 billion uh, in 2008, when there's a financial crisis, where the Singapore government sorted the, uh, uh, the second key from our late President Naden to draw down the reserve to help the Singapore economy during the 2008 2009 uh, global financial crisis, we hit Singapore quite hard temporarily. Right? That particular reserve drawdown was 5 billion. All right? And I'd be, there we are. Five billion, five billion. Mm -hmm. So therefore, two point five billion is half of that particular uh, reserve drawdown. All right. In in perspective, what I'm trying to show that oil refining industry is a very huge industry in Singapore, and it creates a lot of jobs. Uh. so so when this kind of repurposed uh, 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 things came about, uh, uh, you can see that Shell will cut five hundred jobs by the end of two zero two three, and then um, there will be ripple effect down. Uh. Now the issue here is like this. Uh. the issue here is like this. Uh. About relevance, uh, what, what Samuel talked about. Uh. When big companies like Shell, uh, when they say repurpose, uh, it means to say that at the very top level, uh, and Netherlands, uh, and Singapore as well, all right, they are doing a global analysis uh, about what is the core business of Shell going to be uh, from now uh, until 2050. Mm. You can see the energy you're talking about, not only got crude oil, you got those uh, uh, non-carbon, more carbon-friendly uh, type of uh, uh, technology, uh, gas, and what say you not. Mm -hmm. All right? The moment if they do this repurpose exercise, uh, they find that if Singapore is no longer relevant to them, uh, they see that they will shift their business el elsewhere. You know? It's about relevance. Uh. It's about relevance. As you're talking now, uh, I think yesterday there's another news came out Chevron. Doing the same thing, repurpose exercise, assessing while assessing the position in Singapore. So therefore, this is this is some of the uh, um, the situation uh, that we got to be very careful uh, when we see uh, this kind of news. When we see this kind of news, now let's give you one example. Just give you a little bit background about Shell Company. Uh. Shell Company. Shell Company is one of the most uh, forward-looking company in the world. As we are talking now, in fact, uh, I have this uh, book in front of me. I have this book in front of me. It's called uh, Sharp Energy Scenario to 2050. Meaning to say that they see themselves at uh, 2050. Uh, what is the end point? Uh? And this particular book, uh, when I got it, uh, it was in uh, 2011. That was nine years ago. 40, no? 40 years. Uh, yes, of course. Mm. For those of you listening here, if you are from the military services or from the civil servant background before, you will also know that the shell way of identifying leaders uh, is one of the uh, methods uh, the Singapore Civil Service and the SAF uh, adopt uh, to try to identify who is a general, the holistic system. All right. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, Shell uh, company uh, is not a, a small coaching Kura company. The moment they do this on uh, repurpose as a side has got repercussion and serious repercussion uh, uh, on the country where the situation is. Of course, if you are in the right side of the book, in, in their book, uh, you'll be very happy. Uh. But, but what this, if you are... Uh, this also yeah. means is that, right, when one of the leaders do this, uh, it will cause mm. the ripple effect across... Yeah, horizontally, yes, so yes. that their competitors will also have to look at the same thing. Mm. Because if they ah, yes. don't, then they become, they themselves will mm. go for back uh, in terms mm. yes, of correct. competitiveness. Correct. Uh, yeah. Yes, correct. So therefore, uh, therefore, as a, as a financial advisor, we cannot uh, uh, disregard such a news. Uh, number one, 
in the short term, you will see some of your clients lose their jobs and things like that situation. But in a long term situation, uh, you got to start to take a look at your client, especially the retirement portfolio uh, about their investment asset allocation. Uh. Now, just in case, just in case, uh, I hope I hope this will not happen because I myself is Singaporean. Just in case uh, the COVID situation really hits, up, hits us uh, very hard, uh, economically, we cannot recover to where we are. And slowly, slowly, uh, going towards the future, we lose our relevance in the international trade and economy. Uh, the question to ask myself uh, is that if my retirement portfolio is for the next 30 years, uh, uh, do I need to rebalance uh, or reallocate some of my asset allocation uh, into providing me with a sufficient capital and liquidity uh, just in case my children uh, need to go to another country uh, to sort a uh, better life? Uh? Mm. This is a very hard, hard question, hard true question. Now, I, I'm not, I'm not demeaning Singapore. Mm. I'm a Singaporean. I hope Singapore will succeed. But mm. sometimes, as a financial advisor, we got to put emotion aside and really mm. help clients uh, to look far, to look afar. Uh, I also share with Samuel. You take a look at Philippines. In the 1970s, Philippines richer than Singapore. No? But in 1980s, uh, we start to see uh, the first generation of mates uh, coming to Singapore uh, as mates. Uh, now, who are these Filipino mates? Eh? You, may be, uh, you may be amazed. Uh, some of them are, are university graduates. No? Uh, they are better qualified than, their, than the, the employer that they work for. Coming to Singapore as mate, do you like to be mate? What, 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 what does a mate do? Okay. Last to sleep, first to wake up. Sometimes you eat leftover food. When you go out to the restaurant with your uh, uh, employer, your, your madam and sir, Sometimes the restaurant uh, 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 waiter, waitress do not want to serve you. You're like a second-class citizen. You probably work two or three weeks and then get one Sunday off, that kind of situation. And someone we read in the newspaper, uh, salary don't get paid. Some of them even get, uh, get as, uh, bad, badly treated by their employers. Is it good to be mixed? The question to ask why, uh, why does this so highly educated Filipinos want to come to Singapore at that point in time uh, to be mixed? These are facts. Uh. The reason why? Because their country mismanaged the economy. Uh. The economy cannot provide uh, sufficient jobs for them. So no choice. In order to make a good living for their family, they, they come to Singapore, they don't mind to take down, take other uh, jobs. That is um, not so nice, but because of strong currency, uh, they want to make that currency uh, so that they can print certain money back. Ma. The situation can happen in Singapore if the economy is mismanaged. Ah. So as a financial advisor, it is important to understand what are the uh, parameters, what are the structure of Singapore economy, so that when certain industries start to make changes, ah, you can have a source of reflection ah, and, and help clients ah, to so-called take a real look at their be asset more, allocation. Be, be more, the clients themselves yes. need to be also be yes. more aware and be more mm. educated. But for yes. that matter, for that matter, I think today, right, because of, you know, our clients themselves are also very educated people, yes. have access to the same information, mm. right? Yeah, so mm. as financial advisors, we, we have to operate, you know, above a certain line, right? Yeah, it, 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 is, it is important, it is important. We cannot just do focus about uh, the uh, excel allocation, uh, so product-based. Uh. I'll just give you one example, uh, Samuel. A typical uh, uh, a Singaporean or a financial advisor, what you see, imagine, uh, okay, or the, let, let's put financial advisor aside. Just put a typical uh, Singaporean, the asset allocation, the assets that he has. We see this in our fact finding with Kalayan. You know, all right. As a financial advisor, when you collect facts, ma, asset, you got a HDB flat, your CPF, your insurance mm. policy in Sing dollars, your bank account in DBS, mm. savings account in Sing dollars, uh, your unit trust. Denominated in Sing dollars, everything in Sing dollars. No? Mm. All right. Now, my question is uh, what is someday uh, the very currency uh, that you bet your currency that backs your assets on? Uh, really drop in value. Really drop in value. This is a very difficult question to answer. No? Mm. I, I say it again your property, your HDB flat, mm. your CPF, your insurance policy. Your bank account, your unit trust, even your shares in SGX. Everything one single currency, you know. In investment, mm. this is what we call concentration reason. 
All right. Mm. There are some of the things are food for thought. Like. I'm not saying that this thing or the whole thing will collapse overnight. Like. I'm not saying that. Mm. I'm saying that if you are if you are managing uh, an asset allocation, uh, say 10, 20, 30 years down the road, uh, all right, uh, be mindful of all these uh, geopolitical uh, situation changes and understand Singapore economy structure. I repeat again, and understand Singapore economy structure. I always challenge financial advisor students, CHIC students. One simple question. Mr. Student, imagine you are given five minutes to introduce Singapore in an international conference. We are attending an international conference. Uh, the host asks you, uh, could you welcome to my country? Could you uh, also introduce your country to all of us here in this room? Five minutes. Introduce Singapore to us. My question to the financial advisor, yes, what is your response? Hmm. Could you introduce Singapore other than the food and shopping. And what other thing can you uh, highlight to the client uh, or rather to the audience uh, as a financial advisor and explain to the audience uh, why Singapore uh, is a wealth management hub at this point in time? What's so special about Singapore economically, their currency, the rule of law system, some of the uh, uh, fundamental institutions in Singapore, so social institutions like HTB, CPF, all right, systems, uh, or rather, the, and the SIA, the history of SIA, how they come about. Uh, these are some of the basic, uh, 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 what we call success factor that built Singapore what it is to be, uh, but it's not uh, commonly understood the, by people. The pillars, uh. Uh, yes. Uh, why, why is it oil, oil, oil uh, the refinery? Is uh, uh, industry is so important in Singapore. In which, mind you, Singapore I don't have oil. One, no, uh, we, 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 you build underground, there's no oil there. Eh? And despite you got no oil, uh, you can be one of the premier oil refinery uh, uh, player in the world today. Uh. Something must be very deep, or some you must have done something right for a, com a company like Shell, like Exxon Mobil, like Chevron uh, to want to set up shops uh, in Singapore. Mm. Singapore is one small island no, in, in, in Southeast Asia, no? All right, which is one of the most highly unstable region in the world from the military point of view. No? <laughs> Quite unstable, no? you've got uh, uh, different religious uh, fraction, uh, different race, different languages. All right? mm. uh, the entire population not exactly on the whole, not exactly very uh, well educated on the whole la, in Southeast Asia. All right. ah, why does Shell Company or Chevron, uh, I want to set up shop in Singapore. I put in so much capital investment in Singapore. The very same reason, uh, if those parameters have started to shift, uh, will be the very same reason uh, when Shell uh, decided to retreat out of Singapore. Uh. There's a situation. Mm. So, so as a financial advisor, it is important for us to uh, understand this thing. Uh, that has some way in the mindset. Uh. So uh, when certain things happen, all right? Take a look at the asset allocation. You can help client and yourself uh, to, to, to make some mature strategy uh, or decision. Uh, sometimes involve pain. Uh, sometimes involve pain. Uh. All right. But to help the client uh, to look uh, a little bit further ahead. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say this with conviction is because if you are this this, especially those of you uh, who are focusing on estate planning as part of your professional calling. The number one problem about a financial advisor is focusing on estate planning and, and then good at estate planning is that uh, his professional vision uh, about the world affair uh, not very far on because he focused so much on the law, uh, the, the insurance policy, uh, the trust, uh, all within Singapore mm. become inward looking. Uh. Mm. Now, the investment fraternity uh, are they're quite good at this one because they, one of their job is to analyze all these uh, geopolitical situation to justify the asset allocation. Uh, the investment fraternity are very good at that. They, they look for that. But the estate planning uh, and the insurance fraternity uh, tends to be inward looking. Uh, they are very good. Uh, they are very good in the Interstate Succession Act, uh, Trust, uh, uh, Will, uh, all those things. Uh, they, they are very good. I'm not saying they are a lesser person, no. I'm saying that it is their, what we call the blind spots. Uh, a mm -hmm. blind spot of a uh, financial advisor, uh, that is very good at estate planning, but somehow their blind spot uh, is this lack of uh, uh, geopolitical awareness. Uh. Mm. All right. 
So, so just very simple. Uh, just very simple. Just ask yourself this question. If you are given five minutes uh, to introduce Singapore, uh, uh, what's your response? Besides mm. the Chuck Tell in Newton Circle mm. and maybe the uh, the Orchard Road shopping street. Lah. All right. Mm. Now we got no more Robinson to talk about. Gotta talk other things, uh, maybe tanks or what. Lah. Mm. Or Takashima. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing is this, uh, the thing is that um mm. well, like you said, like, the estate planning, you know, mm. uh, the guys that focuses on that. Yeah. Yes. Um you, you can be very vertical in, in your focus, uh, but still, mm. you know, horizontally, there is a real need to understand all this. In fact, when I look oh, yeah. at you know the past mm. few years, right? The past mm. 10 years, for example, mm. there's an increase increasing influence, uh, right, in terms of mm. how all these geopolitics affect us yes. very, very directly, uh, right? Yes. And in fact, that has got to do with estate planning as well, isn't mm. it? Yes. Because a lot of people um they have children, you know, like for example, in my case, right, I'm a Singaporean, mm. but I'm a yes, PR right. in another country, right? Mm. I might do business in another country. Mm. And there are a lot of people who are Singaporeans who also own yes. business overseas as well. Yeah, yes, correct. And when you're in this kind of situation, so estate planning today cannot be just lo- locally driven. Right? It has to be cross borders already, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yes, yes, you can't. Yeah, you're in fact, you're right. But I just want to make a statement very clear, right? Before that, I might sound a little bit like, uh, in Hokkien, they say Kwa Sui Singapore. I am not. No. I want to declare I am a Singaporean. I am proud to be a Singaporean. In fact, uh, my first career was a professional soldier. All right? If need be, uh, if there's a war today, I will fight for Singapore. I die, I will share my blood in Singapore. Lah. All right? Mm. Now, the Singapore has got its strengths as well as it's got its weakness. All I'm saying is that I have a very matured way of viewing uh, the country uh, that you're in. The country that you're in. If you're born here, yeah. Because uh, uh, Singapore make up, uh, we also got a lot of foreigners become Singapore citizens, you see. So, 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 this group of um, uh, Singapore citizens, they don't really understand Singapore history. Mm. I think uh, what's somewhere, worse... Somewhere uh, deep, you see. I think, Alan, uh, this, this, uh, what's worse mm. is this, you know. Yeah. Because for, for, for many years, uh, decades, uh, we grew up, right, with mm. the kind of news in Singapore telling mm. us that, you know, Singapore is always scoring, you know, the top five or top oh, yes, three correct. in, in oh, every... Yes. Every mm. every aspect, mm. right? Mm. So we have the impression that Singapore is like you know, it's like you're bulletproof, lah. You know, you're always the best, uh, You know, well, always the know. best in, in 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 every every yeah. uh, area, right? Or every yeah. vertical, okay? Mm. Mm. But you know, the thing is actually, uh, it's no longer mm. true in some of these some of these, oh, yes. things, right? Correct. If we don't want to sugarcoat this whole thing, right? In oh, some, yes. correct. But uh, the understanding of the general public, right? Mm-hmm. may not be aligned with this reality. Uh. There's so, so mm-hmm. much reason. Like for example, today you talk to some people, mm-hmm. they may still think that China is very backward. Mm-hmm. Uh, not true. To Singapore. <laughs> yeah, am I right? Not not? True. I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not but true. In, in reality, uh, that, that, that is how relevance is. Uh. You look at you know the, the credit card systems, for example, the world, right? we, we uh, yes. transfer money, the SWIFT system and all that kind of things. In China, they, they actually leapfrog uh, the whole thing. Uh, yes. Uh. Yes. <laughs> Right. right, they live for the whole thing. So mm. today they are, in mm. fact, even more advanced. You know, in so many areas compared mm-hmm. to Singapore. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah, but Absolutely. unless yeah, unless we are exposed, okay, mm-hmm. and we stop thinking that mm. um, we are always the best, right? We mm. this these things will not happen. That thing yeah. will not happen. You know, then correct. Yeah, I think I think then we will be. Uh, more aligned with reality, right? Correct, correct. Because as a financial advisor on the, on the other uh, uh, angle, uh, to take a look at trends is important. You take a look at the world trends today. As Mr. Samuel are talking about, China is very advanced. China is advanced. Some of the at least first-line country. I mean, uh, sorry, the first-line city. Even the third-line uh, uh, city yes, have yes. high-speed rail networks. Got, they are got, amazing. They are, they are. Yes, they are, they are, they are. Yeah. So therefore, as a financial advisor, uh, when you take a look at this trend, uh, and you imagine yourself 5, 15, 10 years, 10, 15, 20 years from now. What are some skill sets that you need to have? Maybe perhaps for, for Samuel, in your HQ system, uh, you can come out with a Chinese version. A Mandarin version? Uh, you with your ring fan checklist, you can have a Mandarin oh, there, There's version. been more and more requests, actually, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yes. For instance, as a financial advisor, if um, maybe I should start to take a course in financial planning in Mandarin. Ah. Uh, uh, this is what I'm championing in IPASA, that we are trying to curate certain uh, 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 financial planning course in Mandarin. Case study, PowerPoint, presentation, mm. everything in Mandarin. 
And then I got some of my contemporary will ask me, hey, Alan, is that a market? That kind of situation. So my point is that you have missed the point. Uh, yeah, that's that's the question. Uh. Yeah. Uh, you, you have missed the point. You don't wait until the market form, uh, then you create something uh, to deal with this market. Don't do that. Uh. 1974, Peter Drakkar, uh, in his uh, one of his main book on management, uh, he mentioned one statement on uh, 1974, no? the year of the uh, uh, tiger when my brother, is, my, my younger brother is born, 1974. Said so the purpose of a business is to create a market. The purpose of a business is to create a market. Uh. Not wait for the market to form, then you go into it. Too late already, you know. Mm. You say you do something, you create it. Yeah. Ellen, actually, you can okay. stop sharing the screen so we uh, can see more of mm. you. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay, let me just uh, stop share. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the part. Uh. That's the part on the uh, 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 geopolitical uh, awareness. Uh. No, but we bring this out to this show Singapore because it's quite updated. Uh, because I get this kind of daily briefing on a daily basis. I thought I just uh, forward some... Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Some article to some of my uh, uh within a close group lah, that I'm uh, accountable to lah. All right, mm -hmm. it's, it's not meant to frighten people. It's not meant to evoke certain self righteousness or say other people no good. It is never that way. All right, as a financial advisor, we cannot divorce ourselves away from a current affairs and uh, mm -hmm. the social fabric. Without understanding the social fabric that uh, mm -hmm. in the country that you 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 stay in. Uh, where you build your financial planning businesses. Uh. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, financial planning is about the business of human being, about human relationship, mm -hmm. right? uh, about uh, getting the client to be able to discharge their duty as a husband, as a son, uh, perhaps as a father. Mm -hmm. so, all right, so it's certain of these uh, uh, trends uh, or geopolitical situation mm -hmm. has certain subtle but sure impact uh. Mm. I think it's only right as a financial advisor we start to pay some attention to it. Yeah, that's why that's why we also talk about you know uh, irrelevance. Uh, you know, it's actually oh, yes. very it's very frightening. You know, it, what, yes, how course. does it look like? It's like that. You know, mm. the the client uh, mm. will not kind of tell you or notify you about anything at all. Ah uh, yes, the market don't wait for us, right? Yes, of they course. Simply <laughs> move on. Uh. it will be like one day you talk to them and you you found that they move on already. <laughs> Yeah, right. you right. found that they move on already, and they, they no longer need you for certain things, huh? Okay, you will be like that, and then you'll be very late by the time you realize that you know th that is happening, huh? Okay, so mm -hmm. this is the kind of thing that we do do not want to see, and we want to empower the financial planners. Okay, guys, mm -hmm. the next thing, uh, uh, uh Alan will talk about will be a very interesting uh, case study, lah. This time round, um, from a actual court case, uh, Okay, so Alan, over to you. Mm. Let me just uh, do a share screen. Yep. Hang on, uh, I just do a share screen now. Just a minute. Okay. Just give me a one minute. Okay. You need one minute. Uh. One minute is too long. Uh. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> mm. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, uh, <laughs> let's, go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Now, are you able to see the uh, Lim Lina yeah, yeah, versus yeah, the estate of Kuchengi? Now, uh, okay. this time around, I bring up a court case. Uh, all right. Uh, I think it's important that the financial advisor to understand uh, the mechanics and the technique uh, of reading certain court cases relevant to your trade. Uh. Now, I, I just want to make one, one statement very clear. Uh. We are financial advisor. We are not lawyers. Uh, neither are we social workers. Uh. So, so when we, when we read a court case from a lens of a financial advisor, uh, it's not to enable us to be lawyers or to be to talk better than a lawyer. It is never the case. All right? So we must have the uh, intellectual humility uh, to understand that we are reading this uh, as a financial advisor, as a professional financial advisor, to draw lessons uh, from some of the important judgment and implication uh, where uh, a judge mentioned about. Uh, that's relevant to our trade. Uh. That's relevant to our trade. Uh. That does not mean that uh, lawyers are not important. Lawyers are very important. All right? Mm -hmm. But I just want to uh, bring up this particular uh, court case, which is relevant to uh, estate planning and insurance planning, on uh, insurance nominations, all right? Um, and we learn from that, lah. we learn from that, all right? Ken, right, now you can see from the screen, now, let me just uh, change my screen to the court color. It's uh, Lina Lim versus uh, Estek Kui Chengi. Lah. What is this court case all about? Lah? It's in 2011. Now, uh, just give you some background. Uh, Lina Lim and uh, Estek Kui Chengi, they are a loving hu uh, husband and wife. 
this particular marriage produced no children. Uh. Oh, uh, the both of them are husband and wife. Husband and wife, husband and wife. But you can see estate of quit, meaning to say that uh, the husband passed away. Uh, the husband uh, passed away. Uh, okay. The husband passed away, yes, correct. Mm-hmm. So what happened is that uh, uh, Mr. Quit Chang uh, he has got uh, two women in his life. One is his wife, the other one is his mother. The other one is elderly mother. Okay. 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 So we are going to see in this case, uh, that thanks, uh, thanks for clarifying that. Uh, when you say uh, two yes. women in his life, uh, first impression uh, not very good, uh, huh? Okay. Oh, uh, well, this factual oh. two women. I also got two women in my life. <laughs> my mother and my wife. <laughs> man, yeah, I have more than two men. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I'm okay. surrounded by women. Okay. Right. <laughs> As usual, uh, uh, Mister Kui Changi, uh, is a very um, he's, he's a good husband. Uh, he's also a good son. Uh. but we're going to see the impact of his death. Uh, with some of the assets that he left behind, uh, is he able to discharge his duty as a son? Okay, yeah. So come, you know. So therefore, you can see this case. Uh, it involves uh, three AIA policy. I show that. Can you see that? Mm. The three AIA policy. You add up the uh 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 sum assured and the reversionary bonus. I add up about um close to three hundred odd thousand. Uh. All right. Yeah. Now, of course, in today's standards, uh, three hundred thousand might not be a fantastically big uh, amount, but it's um not it's not a small amount either. No, it's not a small amount either. No. All right. Mm-hmm. It is not the amount that uh every Singaporean have inside their bank account that can just ATM out like three hundred thousand. All right. So mm-hmm. you, it is not a small amount either, but it's not fan- mm-hmm. it's not fantastically big uh. Yeah. Now, as usual, this is the main assets uh, that uh 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 left behind uh. Let's take a look at his um. The two lady, uh, why why is that so? Uh? Now, Mr. Kui Chengi, over here, you can see. All right. Uh, she had purchased, uh, they have purchased a uh, three insurance policy from AIA. Mm-hmm. Now, the plaintiff is the wife. Uh. All right. Mm. The wife was married to uh, 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 Kui Chengi on November uh, 1991. They had no children. Mm. Um, Mr. Kui, uh, he died uh, in test state. Uh. In test state is an estate planning term, meaning to say that you died without a valid will. Uh. All right. Okay. Meaning to say that the uh, asset uh, will be split uh, mm. according uh, to certain percentage uh, as determined by the law. In this law, uh, it's called the Interstate Succession Act. I repeat, it's called the Interstate Succession Act, which applies to all Singaporean, all right, or, or, or anybody uh, who uh, adopts out in Singapore other than a Muslim, because a Muslim in Singapore has got another set of uh, a, a rule, uh, this estate distribution rule. Uh. The one we, we shall not talk about in this uh, session here. So, uh, Mr. Kwe Chengi has got uh, his mother, Madam Lu, over here. Mm. Right? And also, uh, uh, Madam Lina. Madam Lina. Yeah, can you see? All right. I said, uh, over here, the, the court case was talk about uh, they're entitled to half of the uh, deceased estate. Now, um, Madam Lu, uh, the mother, uh, initially is okay, no? She said, okay, at least uh, my, my son passed away. I got 150,000. Uh, not too bad. Relationship with the... Um, uh, former daughter-in-law is quite good, no, actually, initially, initially, initially. Mm. But, however, uh, when Madam Lina, when, when Madam Lina was um, sorting out or clearing the uh, husband's, uh, her husband's, her late husband's um, uh, Estate. personal things uh, mm. at home, uh, she discovered uh, the original policy document no, for the three AIA policy, you know. And she discovered uh, that the application form uh, within the policy, uh, write down uh, the beneficiary is her name, no? and in her capacity as a wife. So, Madam Lina decided to seek legal advice. Now, let me just pause a while uh, and just rewind a little bit uh, to highlight to you uh, what was the complication here. No? For whatever reason, AIA paid out the sum assured no? when Mr. Quick died. Not supposed to, but for whatever reason, administrative AIA pay the sum assured out into an estate account in DBS. You can see the DBS estate account. All right. This DBS estate account was opened uh, jointly uh, by Lina Lim and the uh, mother-in-law, uh, Madam Lua. All right. They are like joint uh, administrators. Okay, so, uh, can I, yeah? can I, can I mm. just clarify, right? So, after the shortly after the death mm. right, mm. occurred, Right, AIA actually pay out this entire pay out. amount. Pay out. Okay. Pay out the entire by, amount. By right, mm-hmm. they can only pay out up to a certain limit, right? 250,000. Is that right? Uh, uh, 150. 150,000. Yeah. Okay. But for but whatever reason, 
Ah, they pay out the full amount. So this this amount that is paid out do not need to wait for the the letter of uh, administration, uh, right? Or is it the Uh, letter of probate? Uh, that one is a separate topic. Uh. No, anything above 150,000, you need to wait. Uh. So you need to wait, this, right? No, but in, they did not. Case, la, so they, uh, they just simply pay out, right? Oh, uh, pay out. No, 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 no. No, AIA did not make a mistake. Just that mm. uh, it is not the, the, the letter of administration issue. Right. All right. It's that AIA should have paid uh, the money uh, into another person's name. Uh. In, I'll, I'll touch on that later. Uh. Okay, okay. The situation, okay. Uh, the. the Letter administration has been issued, so so called the estate lah, so called has been settled lah. Mm, right, mm, so, so the process mm. done already. They got the letter administration already. So with that AIA okay. actually pay out lah. So AIA rightfully pay out to the estate, uh, account lah. Going to that. Okay, okay. But, okay. but the issue is here is that after the account, uh, the the money was being paid into the DBS account. Uh. Of course, you pay inside here already. The uh, supposed to distribute the money already, ma. So uh, out of three hundred fifty thousand, if there's no estate creditors, uh, Madam Lina will entitled to half of it, and then uh, the other half to the mother-in-law, lah. Okay. Mm. The problem here is like this: Madam Lina discover uh, the original policy document. In the original do- policy document, she saw her name being listed uh, in the application form uh, as a beneficiary. With her name spelled in full, her IC number and her relationship with Kui uh, Chenggi, her husband. She's a okay. spouse. Uh. Yep. So she sorted uh, legal advice. Mm. So this situation is like this. The lawyer felt that, tell Lina Lim, hey, I think uh, you potentially uh, is entitled to 100% of this uh, summer show. You do mm. not have to share with your mother-in-law. Because, mm. because your name is written there as a beneficiary uh, and that triggers off uh, what we call the Section 73, mm. of the Convincing Law of Property Act. This the one, whole rate. thing become a trust policy. Mm. Now, you might say, hey, Alan, this one is Section 73. Lay. Nowadays, we got S49L lay, in the Insurance Act. Now, these two mm. things are their link. Mm. All right. So the purpose of me telling you, sharing this case is that uh, the power of trust nomination. The power of trust nomination. So in this situation, uh, all right, uh, uh, Lina Lin felt that, hey, I entitled to the whole thing and then I don't need to share. Now, now, Samuel, right now I counter ask you this. Uh, let's assume you are the, the mother, the mother-in-law. Uh, let's assume you are Madam Lu. Uh. Mm. Um, initially you thought you got 150 odd thousand, no, and you are already no. Mm. You're no longer yeah. You mm. might need this money to live out through your remaining years. Okay, can I, can, I ask, uh, can I ask a question? Backtrack a little bit, right? Mm, yep. So in this case, uh, based on the uh, intestate succession act, right? Yes. How is the distribution supposed to be? The distribution is supposed to be, uh, let me draw the diagram. Because here, there's uh. no wheel, la, right? There's no wheel. Hmm. Let me draw the diagram. This is uh, uh, Madam Lu. This is Lina. All right. Lina is the wife. Madam Lu uh, is the uh, mother of the deceased. So uh, initially, you're uh, supposed to be 50%. Okay. 50%. So, okay. okay. All right. So we are talking about close to uh, 150 odd thousands. Uh. So because of this, uh, that's why there is uh, uh, an, an estate account, right, where both uh, are yes. in there. Uh, yes. It's because of yes, this correct. distribution. Uh, uh, right. Correct, correct. So that's a part of the situation. Yeah. Uh. So uh, this 3 AIA policy, uh, the 300 odd thousand, uh, uh, Madalena felt that she got she entitled to 100%. Uh. Mm. So, so I have another question. Mm. I have another question. Mm-hmm. Or at least as it appears to me, the first mm-hmm. question I'll ask is, in this case, then why did the insurance company, mm. right, knowing that this is a trust policy, uh, yes, correct. should have paid to Lina directly rather yes. than to the estate account? Correct. correct. That was what I mean by AIA company uh, accidentally paid out the sum of sure. Now, okay. that's, that's the part uh, that is not relevant to this uh, court case. No? The situation mm. right now, uh, Madam, Le- the, the whoever loses this case can actually have a separate suit with AIA then. Uh, say, hey, how come administratively you pay out? You're not supposed to. Mm. All right. This particular court case is between uh, the two ladies. The okay, two ladies. Right, yeah. right. Mm. All right. Madam Lu felt that, uh, hey, I'm entitled to 50%. Ma. Mm. Madam Lina felt that, hey, no, 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 no. The policy has got beneficiary name. My name is there. 100%. Okay. Eh. okay. So, of course, uh, Madam Lu is unhappy. I mean, she brings this up as a court case. Uh. So this one become a, a, a case that uh, the judge need to decide. Mm. So, Samuel, guess who wins this court case? We would think that should should be 
by the, the by means of the trust should be Lina. Lina. Yeah. Yeah. So as a financial advisor, let, let's go out to the uh, based on evidence, uh, based on facts. Uh, what does the facts say? Mm -hmm. okay, uh, mm -hmm. You can see uh, the application of the facts. All right. In this, mm -hmm. in the present case, as mentioned, uh, the plaintiff mm -hmm. name uh, was written uh, under the column name of beneficiary. And mm -hmm. the relationship as a deceased is wife is also indicated under the column labored relationship. Mm. This is therefore sufficient not to indicate the policy will express to be for the benefit of his wife. Mm. Uh, as such, Section 23 of the CLPA was brought into operation and the trust was immediately constituted uh, in favor of who? Eh? The wife. Mm. The proceeds of ARA insurance policy does not form part of the estate. Mm. I accordingly allowed the application. I also ordered the cost of this proceed to be paid by the estate on solicitor and client basis. So therefore, therefore, not only uh, Madam Lu uh, lose the entire, uh, lose this case. Uh, that means she thought mm. that she got the half of that uh, sum assured. She did yep. not get it. Uh. Yep. And then whatever left is inside the estate account, uh, they still need to use that account to go and pay legal fee. Uh. Now, mm. legal fee, uh, you, you go to high court. Uh, uh, I don't think you pay $50 an hour for the judge to decide your case. Uh. Mm. Uh, the, the fee is quite a lot. Uh. All right. Mm -hmm. So the issue here is uh, uh, the wife, uh, won the court case, then she got an uh, entitlement of the um, entire sum assured, uh, which form uh, the majority percentage of the estate left behind by Mr. Kwa Chingi. You know? mm. Now, here is an accent. Here's a question from the estate planning point of view. Do we seriously think that Kwa uh, Chingi uh, intentionally uh, not to leave anything uh, for his mother? Or he accidentally uh, got another thing. We pause a while and think, man, reflect. Man. Did Mr. Kwechengi uh, seriously uh, wanted to leave his mother uh, totally out? Uh, of his I think estate? this is why I, 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 hmm. I think, right? I think a lot of people, while they just go through life, right? The yes. busy life day by day, will not yes. think of this thing, right? Yes. But if you sit down with this person, you ask this question, ah. then, it, then his answer might be different. I'm sure if you ask me, I would think that, you know, I definitely want to leave something for my mother. Yes. So the issue is, uh, we are starting this case uh, as a case study. Uh. Mm. So this case will build into what we call the scenario planning. Mm. Had Mr. Kui Chengi uh, had a financial advisor, uh, Mm. That has competent enough uh, to run through a review with him. Uh, sir, Kui Chengi, Mr. Quick, uh, now we are having our annual estate planning insurance review. Okay, let me collect the facts first. Okay, I gather all your facts ready. Mr. Quick, I will go back to my office. I'll run through a scenario. Mm. Assume you die tonight. Based on the way uh, you hold your asset, based on the way uh, that you nominate your insurance policy, uh, mm. I will plot out uh, how the capital will flow, uh, assuming mm. you die tonight. I see. Then I will show it to you. Then I will show it to Mr. Quick. Hey, Mr. Quick, if you die tonight, uh, uh, your wife tend to get uh, the entire amount of the uh, sum assured from your 3 AIA policy, which form a uh, majority of your estate. Your mother got very little. Mm. Is this the outcome uh, that you acceptable want? Uh, by you? Mm. At least Mr. Quick uh, got the benefit uh, of having this one showed to him. Uh, Mm. If you say that, hey, no, 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 this is not what I intended to be. Uh, maybe mm. I need to create additional capital for my mother or recalibrate the, the, the uh, insurance nomination. Mm. All right. Or redo some of my estate planning uh, 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 consideration uh, that ensure uh, my elderly mother uh, take a meaningful amount uh, to live off uh, her remaining life. Uh. Mm. You see that part? So mm. that in order for me uh, to discharge my duty uh, mm. as a son, to my elderly mother. Mm. Now, Samuel, I'm going to ask you a hard question now. Yeah. Yep. In this case, uh, did Mr. Kui Chengi uh, discharge his duty uh, as a son to his elderly mother? Based on facts. Uh? Yeah, he, he did not. Uh. Yes. It's a very hard statement, no? Mm. But the issue here is that we do not want our client uh, accidentally uh, left our elderly parent out there. Uh. Mm. I repeat, ho, mm. we did not want, we do not want our client uh, where accidentally mm. uh, they leave our, some of their uh, important loved ones out of their estate. Uh. Mm. 
Yeah, I think by this time, right, I I, mm. I kind of uh, interject a little bit, right? Yes, right. Uh, this is the fourth session, uh, everyone, you know, and mm. and in the first session, actually, Alan also talked about, you know, uh, scenario planning uh, quite a mm. bit, uh, you know, so I encourage you guys to also look at the video in the first session. But, uh, you know, as I sit here and go through this conversation with Alan more and more, I'm also a student at the same time as, you know, having this conversation with him. Um, it is becoming, it's dawning on me more and more now that, you know, uh, part of the role of the financial planner, right? When we often sit down with, let's say, for example, you sit down with a guy, right? Maybe 35 years old, you know, why, why maybe working, but maybe not full-time. Got to look after the two young children, right? We often talk about his income replacement in the context of his family, right? Um, but actually, a lot of a lot more things can can go wrong, right? Uh, a lot a lot of times, uh, capital can be drained even if our old parents are are sick and not well, you know. But sometimes these considerations are not put into the scenario, right? So, Alan, um, so what you're saying is that. You know, in this case, right? Mm-hmm. You know, the other thing, the other thing is also uh, the other conception I, I I know is that when we talk about estate planning, uh, people tend to think that uh, estate planning is for the rich and famous, uh, those with a lot of money. Uh, am I right now? No. <laughs> okay. But in this case, uh, we are not talking about no. someone like we're not talking about I think we are talking about a family that is relatively simple, right? Husband and wife, yeah. no children. By the way, any indication how old are they or not? Uh, uh, around my age, around our around age. Around our age, la. La. so when that happened, maybe they were like in their 40s, am I right? 40s, la? La. Ah, correct. Yeah. Right. So he, correct. he, we call this uh, like a premature death. Mm. Okay. So it's a relatively simple, simple family, la, but yet in mm-hmm. a situation like that, right? A simple mm-hmm. question uh, like ah, yes. this would mm. make a, a, a hell of a difference uh, to, to this gentleman's uh, own, own, own mother, am I right? Yes, correct, correct. Because you just say, look at this case, uh, when they go to the, the court, you know, to fight it out, you know, what do yeah. you think is the relationship between the yeah, uh, it would never mother be, uh, and yeah. that former daughter-in-law? It's about survival as far as they, they are concerned, you know. I think for the for the mother is that definitely she's so old, she really don't understand all this, uh, am I yes, right? Yes. Correct. Yeah, yes. the wife the wife didn't also. It uh, was quite interesting that you mentioned that she managed to 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 find these policies. Uh. Yes, uh, there again, there's another problem over here. Am I right? Or not? Mm, yeah. There are millions of policies on claim, uh, right? Mm, what if yeah. she was not able to find these policies or she found these policies, uh, problem, uh. She found these policies uh, years later because you're stuck deep in the storeroom. Uh. Uh, yes, correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, this is a very simple uh, uh, court case, but here got wide implication about the power of trust nomination. So uh, we mm-hmm. cannot just go around getting our client just to do trust nomination just like that. Uh. We really mm-hmm. got to run through uh, a scenario planning, uh, have a deep understanding of the, the state of relationship, uh, the quality of relationship mm-hmm. between um, the various stakeholders within the family members. Uh. Mm-hmm. So in this case, uh, Alan, Alan mm-hmm. just a very quick one. I know this thing can get very technical, right? Mm-hmm. Just a very quick one, right? Mm. What could have been done uh, for Mr. Mm. Quick? Oh, you see, uh, what could have been done? Number one, very important, let him see the situation. Number one. Yeah. And number two, uh, you got he got the three AIA policy. Ma. He mm. could have, he could have uh, uh, changed the nomination of one of them, uh, all right, to, to direct the capital to his mother. Of course, because this one's a trust nomination. Cannot be changed because, anymore. No, the consent of the wife is needed. No, no, no. You, you can actually revoke a trust nomination. It but must be with the consent of the la, wife. You, you, you need the consent of the wife. Ah. You yeah, need the consent yeah. of the beneficiary yeah. that yeah. in that in that uh, policy. La, all right? Or, or okay, so, I purchase an additional yes, one for the mother, correct, right? Correct. If not, la, otherwise, you can uh, uh, purchase an additional policy or you can redirect some of your other assets la, like your CPF or bank account and whatsoever. Mm. But mm. of course, insurance policy is the most efficient way to do this kind of plan giving and asset planning la, in which you can direct... Uh, in which... Yeah, accurately okay. the mm. capital to the elderly mother that you want mm. through assignment, mm. through a revocable nominations. Mm. Mm. All right. So there are many things you can do. Meaning to but, say, uh, Alan, yes. this simple solution do not even involve a will, right? Uh, we are not even talking about yes. needing a will yet, right? So for example, <laughs> if we, right? So every time we talk about estate planning, people think, oh, I have to write will. It's as if, okay. So in this case, for example, one solution uh-huh. is, right? Yes. Um, 
you don't go and tell the wife to renominate la, that might create more problems. La. Let's say ah, you yes, purchase la, another policy, la, right? Yes, correct. And you name the beneficiary as the mother. Yes, correct. Right. So that one will have no question, right? I mean, no it's very no. clear as day, right? When won't be yes, challenged correct. in the future, isn't correct. it? Correct. 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 He could have another additional uh, 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 policy, whether term yeah. or whole life or whatsoever, depend on the budget situation that he has. Yeah. Uh, make use of some sort of a financial planning uh, uh, methodology la, to compute yeah. the time value of money. Okay, right. for instance, uh, um, say, assuming you want to give $1,000 every month to your mother, right? yeah. and you work it out. La. If you die tonight, you want to pro continue to provide, say, for 20 years. Mm. Right? Then you use the time value of money. Yes, uh, uh, to calculate the total yes, capital requirement. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. say yeah. maybe you calculated to be, say, uh, mm. just a figure, uh, say, mm. 300,000 example. Just, just a figure, uh, uh, say, yeah, say 300,000. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you can create an additional policy of 300,000, relatively cheap. Mm. Uh. Mm. All right. So under normal situation, your mother should pass away before you uh, because mm. she's older. Uh. So if that situation happened, you just change the nomination to other uh, loved ones, uh, your wife, your children, or whatsoever. I see, I see. All right. I see. So that's a very, very neat and uh, a the, beautiful the, strategy. For, for example, but if let's say, you know, I mean, you give a 300,000 to an old lady, right? She might not mm. know what to do. Then oh, all, yes. all her unqualified advisors will start to come in, uh, right? Mm, yes, and that, that 300,000 might be finished in three years. Uh, okay. So in which yes. case, uh, that's where trust mm. come in. Uh, am I right now? Uh, yes, correct. 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 Mm. You can have a, a, a that once the capital has been set up and a subsequent review, you can go through uh, the importance of setting up a, a very simple uh, insurance trust. Mm. A very simple insurance trust. Mm. I, I, I'm I need qualify. I'm not talking about the section 49 L uh, of insurance. It is not. This one is mm. a, 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 an express trust you can set up uh, mm. to help to uh, manage that uh, 300,000 for your elderly mother. La. I right? see. I see. That, that's a situation, ma. Because that's I a see. separate topic altogether, mm. All right. Mm. How do how do we deal with that situation, no? mm. At least at least you don't leave your elderly parents in the lurch, ah. The situation mm. about this case, ah, what I felt so much about this case is that I myself, I am a husband, I am a son as well, ah, All right. <laughs> you My have a similar mother. situation, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Correct. So yeah. I don't think, ah, every man, ah, would intentionally want to leave his mother, ah, out of In, the consideration, uh, yeah. Out of the thing, uh, I mean, you totally yeah. don't want to give anything to your mother. Mm. I find it very strange. Uh, at least not in this part of the world. Uh, Asian, uh, mm. not like that one. No. Mm. You say, no, it's not like that. No. no but because then, in Singapore, yeah. when we got married, uh, most of the time, mm. we like hold asset jointly with our wives, ma, our bank account, mm. or some of our bank account with joint name. Sometimes for administrative purpose, ma, your gyro need to pay bills. Ma. That mm. kind of thing. You deposit your salary. But then this is also another very typical, typical case uh, of, you know, mm. Yeah, I mean, generally we don't have time to think about death, lah, right? But mm -hmm. we we assume that you know we live up to one hundred and twenty years old. Am I right? Mm, and quite right. and 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 very likely the, the our parents will, will will depart before us, lah, Okay, mm -hmm, correct. But uh, this is a case of premature death, lah, death lah, forty ah, yes. over years yes. old, right? It's correct. And suddenly this very unfortunate situation happened. Mm -hmm. If this thing did not happen, this court case did not happen. Ah. The wife probably having a good relationship with the mother. There's ah, yes. still a good chance that she'll continue to look after the mother. Isn't ah, it? Yes, yes, certainly, right. certainly. Yeah, the relationship is still intact. But then now because of this, definitely <laughs> the relationship was never the same. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. It will, can, cannot be the same anymore. Cannot be the I same mean. anymore. Yeah. La. Right. <laughs> Which is an unfortunate case. La. So again, yeah. this, is, you know, this is something that um, do not need very complex estate do planning uh, mechanism. Mm. Am I right? Mm. Yes, correct. Asking a very simple question about this scenario. So, you know, if you guys have a client like that, right, just asking mm. this scenario, mm -hmm. right, and you could mm -hmm. uh, put in place a very simple plan mm -hmm. uh, to, to prevent a tragedy mm -hmm. like that from happening. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, correct. Correct. So, the other thing, the other uh, uh, message I want to bring about, this is the kind of uh, uh, information uh, that we will be deposited in uh, HQ. Uh. All right. So, by the Samuel side, you will... Uh, inventorize uh, this uh, information. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. For, for the members to, to do uh, research or yeah. for the, as a form of reference. This, this, whole, exercise, this whole exercise is uh, very uh, interesting for me as well because mm -hmm. um, as we go on with this conversation, you know, we will get to see more scenarios such as this, uh, right? Mm -hmm. It's also a research as far as we are concerned, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Uh, because if you want to run through a plan, I mean, I remember very clear. I mean, 
maybe because you repeat this so many times, it, it becomes very hard for me to forget, like, you know. Mm. Uh, it's like when in your first session, you actually asked this question and I attended one of your previous session with uh, another company. You mm. gave a talk to the entire company, right? Mm. And you asked this question, uh, you know, what makes you think that the plan that you put in place will surely work? Uh? <laughs> you know, in the, in the first impression when people hear that, uh, it actually may sound offensive, you know. Are you saying that <laughs> I as a financial planner, I may be even a CFP and all that, right? <laughs> You're saying that the plan I put in place uh, may not work uh, because the risk have not actually uh, manifest itself uh, in reality. Yeah. Uh, it's just a risk yeah. in theory, right? We know yeah. it's a risk, right? Mm. And so now, now as the more as we go through this, right, I, I begin to understand better yes. what you mean by that. Uh. So guys, mm. don't, Please don't <laughs> think that as uh, like a father scolding you, you know. <laughs> you may plan, 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 but hey, your clients are your 300 clients, all may not work. <laughs> it's not, no. But in fact, if you see this uh, from another light, uh, right? Yes, from correct, another light, correct, uh, correct. you will start to realize that actually all these things that's been highlighted over here translates to conversations you open up with your existing mm -hmm. client in your review, you know. Correct. And opportunities, right? Opportunities yeah. for you to actually plug so many holes that are there with your existing clients, right? <laughs> when I say plug the holes, of course, that translate to business transactions as well. Ah, yes, correct. Like that, okay. So, yeah. So, uh, moving forward, yes, we are looking at this not just from knowledge point of view, but um, I'm a technologist. I spend a lot of time thinking about technology structuring and all that, right? Data structuring mm. and all that, right? So when we put all these case studies in place, uh, uh, we are going to also <laughs> put the technology structure into it, uh, right? We'll, I will explain more on what I mean by that in, in the, in the yeah, near yeah, future, yeah. okay? Correct. But what it okay, means is good. that uh, we will be able to pass through a plan uh, through uh, multiple scenarios uh, mm. and get to see the results quick, okay? Yeah, correct, correct, good, yeah. yeah. So yeah, Alan, Yes, come. Now, having said this, right, I think this is a good juncture to talk about this. Uh. Uh -huh. you, you have mentioned this many times. Uh. I mean, I've listened to many of your talks before, but, you know, it's the topic about uh, why financial planners uh, need to feel proud about the kind of work they do, right, and, and what they do, okay? I mean, in my own training with them, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I always give this very uh, interesting role play, lah, you know, the elevator pitch, lah, right? And what it means is that if I if I'm let's say in the elevator with you, you only have a few seconds, you know. Uh, how do you describe to me what you do for a living? La, right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of financial planners, um, you know, they will say that they are doing different kinds of things, just short of saying that I'm an insurance agent or I'm a financial planner with XYZ company, la, right? Mm -hmm. But then the question is why this question is actually a very interesting question for me to qualify or to understand in a very short time. Uh, what this financial planner think of himself in relating to his in this industry and the work that he's doing. Lah, okay. Mm -hmm. So for many years, I thought that the biggest problem in the industry has been prospecting. Lah. In fact, today, if you say this, you know, almost nine out of 10 people will lift their hand and agree it's true. A prospecting is the most difficult thing. But actually, if you dig deeper than this, it's not. I personally think that the biggest problem in this industry for financial planners and advisors is a self-esteem issue. Lah. Right. So, Ellen, um, I want you to, you know, can you please share with us your perspective about this? Why financial planners really need to feel more proud than they should? Uh? Yes, because they are performing a job uh, that um, no other people can do or supposed to do. No? Now, let me, before even I describe this, uh, let me explain to Samuel and then maybe yeah. to the viewers, uh, why am I so passionate about this? Now, uh, I am also a CHSC assessor. And then, uh, especially the very last topic about this uh, financial plan application, uh, the this prospective student need to present to me one-on-one, -on -one, all right, uh, mm. before they can pass the CHFC, la, the final mm. one. I've been doing that for many years. So, I, I last come out over the years, uh, I met up one-on-one, -on -one, uh, close to 3,000 advisors. No? Okay, that that's means quite I, a number. Yes, I, one person. Right through the lecturing in CHFC through that uh, assessment, the CHF one on one, and recently I'm also uh, assessing certain uh, certification program of a huge British insurance company. Again, I had the opportunity to have a few minutes of one on one with them. It's now, a necessary I, I, few minutes. Yes, uh, everyone must uh, go yes, through correct. a few minutes with yes, you. Uh. Yes, correct. So, right. so I have sufficient data to form certain statistic conclusion. 
Now, one of the common denominators that I have observed are uh, that some of these students that come to me, uh, some of them are, are top producer, no? T-O-T, C-O-T. I can typically find their face every year in the newspaper. One. Well, no, when the insurance company like uh, advertise, uh, they are top producer. Mm. But they got, I got one domin- denominator, common denominator I, I observed to all of them. Hey, Alan, actually, uh, I feel empty inside. Alan, I know what to do. I'm very a good producer. I know how to get production. But every year, uh, from January, I'm going to start all over again. Uh. Sometimes, uh, how come clients don't view me as a professional? Now, these are statements from the heart, uh, from the advisor. You mean they uh, actually, they actually yes. relate this to you? Yes. I say, hey, how come uh, sometimes uh, clients don't view me as a professional? Mm. It's a common denominator, no? Mm. And some of these people who, 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 who spoke to me are Good producer, solid producer, or no? Then mm. I ask myself, hey, why like this? I been asking myself, why like this? Mm. Then I begin to think through a little bit problem, really deeper. As I was, um, mm. um, Samuel will know that I also lead in the association, the education and training department. And one of the very first projects that I do for the, I did for the association is to write out the the ethics course. Uh. What's the ethical code we need to uh, uh, follow through? Uh. I find that, uh, I think we have to reflect ourselves on what is the role that we do as a financial advisor. Are we really proud of what we do? Or is mm-hmm. it because this industry is easy to earn commission, easy to make mm-hmm. big money? Which can be true, no? If your system is quite solid, uh, all right? Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. a transactional base. I mean... I think there's a wide yes. spectrum. Yes. Uh. There's uh, a yes. really wide spectrum. Uh, yes, yes. Those got wide. Yeah. Of, of yes, those you're right, you're right. Uh, those that somehow... Uh, find uh, yes. the you know the, the right spot mm. or to occupy mm. ah, yes. they, they very, can. very 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 well yes, ah. yes. Uh, we all know that knowledge might not be that good also can oh, yes, but the yes. thing is the, yes. the, thing, the issue here is that right I'm, I'm going to the fundamental core how we view ourselves as a professional mm. first of all we could understand this role as a financial advisor's rep uh, is a privilege uh. now I will just play a game uh, right now with Samuel now, mm. now Samuel uh you were a financial advisor before, no? Mm. Can you imagine uh, in those days that uh, you were not financial advisor? Well, your best friend uh, tells you uh, what asset he has, what debt he's owed, what liability he has. Uh. Well, your best friend. You must think of a think of a best friend. Think of a buddy. <laughs> all, yeah. all men, we all got buddy one. Eh? Whether, whether yeah. you an ass, you don't want. Mm. Well, your best friend tells you uh, what mm. asset he has, what liability he, he has. Okay, yeah, I tell you the answer. La. Hmm. Well, sometimes tell me the asset that he don't have also. <laughs> <laughs> and the liability that that, that he has, uh, right? Uh, definitely, most likely uh, not. Uh, some, uh, really, uh, yes. those that... Yeah. Right. But, no, yeah. no, Samuel, I will carry on this game. Uh, but this game, I designed myself to ask financial advice. Okay. Uh, in the heart, uh. Well, okay. your best friend uh, tells mm. you uh, how much income they make uh, and how much expenses uh, they spend. Uh, that's one definitely, we, it's a sensitive uh, thing. Man. Yeah. Yes. But do you realize that because uh, mm. Alan uh, or the great viewer of your you got the RNF code, uh, you can ask a stranger, uh, hey sir, hey, what's your asset? What's your liability? Mm. Uh, what's your own structure of your asset? Uh, who is liable for the liability? What's your income? What's your expenses? Mm. What's your family structure? Mm. What's the quality of the relationship between your wife and your mother? Mm. Mm. Uh, a client, uh, a stranger, uh, give it to you, no? Mm. This, informa- this sensitive information uh, mm. and Sometimes they don't even tell this information to their spouse. No? Some yeah. of you, you are long in the industry, you know. Uh, you know more about the client uh, in terms mm. of finance. Uh, sometimes mm. even personal thing. Uh, more than the spouse. More than his spouse yeah. or her spouse. Now, that in itself is a privilege, you know. But provided, let me qualify, right? Ah, yes. Provided, provided. That's why in HQ, we, we believe this, that the future is mm. bright for trusted advisor, right? Alan? Yes. Provided right. you are a trusted advisor, if you are not a trusted advisor, you may struggle to even convince your client to tell you all this information. Yes, correct. correct. Uh, but, but let's assume but, we, you are a trusted advisor. Yeah, let, so let, yes, let I just, see the privilege. Uh, yeah. let, let me just finish it. Uh. Yeah. With the privilege, uh, come the professional obligation uh, and the professional duty. Uh. I use the word obligation, no? which is a very important word, no? provided you believe in it. No? Mm. To analyze the data, uh, and find out where's the potential blind spot uh, and return it to the client. I repeat, huh? this is what we're supposed to do no? with mm. that privilege. I it see. is each and every one of our, our professional uh, obligation and duty uh, because to analyze we have the, the privilege, data. Uh, 
Yes. Because we have that privilege. Yes, yes. correct. I want to be very blunt over here. The, the information that the client give you are not solely only for you to close a case. No? Not solely only for you to pass a BSC and then well, you go MDRT or kind of situation. That's why sometimes you got difficulty in getting the information from the client because the client found that, hey, I'm giving you information for you to close me. Uh. Very funny. Eh? Mm. But you have to demonstrate uh, the part. Uh, but you can't just demonstrate because demonstrate uh, without believing it, you're faking it. Uh. Mm. You have to believe in it that there's a privilege over there. No? Mm. And what you what mm. you view yourself as a financial advisor is a privilege. You know? mm. We are supposed uh, to analyze the data, uh, run through the scenario, the kind of situation. Mm. Scenario is a term mm. that I use. Uh, you can think of the term yourself. Uh. Right, mm. that kind of situation. Uh. Mm. And at the end of the day, uh, is to find out uh, mm. during death situation, during disability situation, during mm. critical illness situation, sometimes divorce, bankrupt, loss of mental mm. capacity situation, mm. or business owner situation, certain risks happen. Uh, does a client has got sufficient capital income liquidity uh, so for him to the, discharge the, the his duty? Scenario sim- yes. I, I call it in my word scenario simulation. Yes. Now. Okay. Yes. So, so to repeat, uh, I mean, I think to emphasize, mm. uh, I mean, Ellen has said this a mm. few times, but I think, you know, mm. frankly, I didn't see it this way, uh, to be frank, right? So this mm. is enlightening to me. The keyword here really is the keyword uh, privilege, uh, right? Mm. The privilege of uh, the, the client, you know, telling us all this information. Yeah? And what do we do in return? Uh, yes. Right? And maybe we are talking about this work of fiduciary duty. Oh, that is another yes, meaning to big, say that, big area to talk yes, about, right? Correct, correct. Mm. No, I let's not talk about the legal side of the fiduciary. They want mm. in a separate uh, uh, uh you can have a separate session to talk about session. this, now. yeah. But but we ought to have this fiduciary duties mindset, no, mm. of us uh, mm. having been granted this privilege uh, mm. of analyzing the data and returning mm. back to the client. Uh. Correct. If the client see that you're doing this one, uh, <laughs> mm. You, you will be definitely will be the trusted one uh, because yeah. it is impossible for the client uh, mm. to give this True. privilege uh, to two or three or four or five advisors. Not possible one. Uh, no. Human don't operate that way. Human only uh, trust one or two. Or they do not want to repeat it over yes. so many people as well. Yeah, yes, yeah. correct. Unless uh, mm. you abuse the trust. We need to say that in the year seven years of say, say this mm. advisor has been consistently producing for seven years. In the seven year uh, she mm. or he uh, abuse the privilege, uh, mm. and so called cheat the client or, or myself. We we seen this in in ethic study. Uh, how come some yeah. top producer fake a policy, mm. right? Collect client premium, never pay insurance company. Mm, mm, mm. You study all these cases. Mm. This advisor, uh, some of them are top producer. Uh, they never they never breach their ethical code uh, on mm. the first day of the business. They are solid. But, but how come towards the end part, uh, they know the consequence? Why they still do it? Eh? Mm. The kind of situation. So, okay, Alan. Mm. Now, it seems that this topic is can be quite a, a large topic. <laughs> you know, you know, you know why I say that. Huh? Uh, in fact, I also remember. I mean, now you are talking about. Uh, it's like this is like the beginning of it, like we, we are just talking about because of that position that you know these yeah. advisors are in. You have that privilege, mm. and there's yes. an obligation to return this yes. this privilege, right, in the Correct. form of, you know, doing. Doing the work right, lah. Okay, mm. but then also there, there's another part that I remember you spoke about in the past, lah. Okay, when you are in a planning scenario whereby mm. it involves, you know, the the different uh, counterparties, lah. Right. Let's say a businessman, and he would have his mm. lawyers, he would have his accountants, and all that, right. Mm. And then the financial planner, which is also or the advisor, is also one of that party contributing yes. to the entire, the mm. entire. Uh, plan for this uh, individual, uh, yes. right? Correct. And the role, the role that an advisor play here is also something that um, you mentioned before. Uh, the advisor need to know that they are playing a role that no one can do and as oh, such, yes. they need to be proud about that as well, right? And if you do, they, don't, they don't know this and they don't execute it properly, <laughs> then they become like what you say, a postman, uh, right? Maybe you can explain <laughs> more. Uh, over to you, Alan. You explain more on this, yeah. All right, maybe I, I know where Samuel coming from. Uh, uh, maybe it's, it, that was uh, quite quite rampant in the era of estate planning. Uh. Now, when you see a financial advisor and then couple estate planning, uh, mm. sometimes I want to counter us. Uh, hey, what's the specific deliverables uh, at the end of this uh, estate planning so-called services that you provide? Uh, what's the specific deliverables? Uh, what will I receive at the end of the day? Uh? Mm. 
is it an insurance policy or is it a will or is it what? Mm-hmm. All right, nothing wrong being insurance policy, but you got to be very yeah, of course. Yeah. You got to say the truth, lah. Yeah. But the, the situation is that estate planning has become like a sales idea or something to 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 attract client in which. Mm. The, at the end of the day, the, the, the client sees insurance policy. That is not so right. Now. You, you don't make estate planning to be like that. Yeah. So estate planning is a very uh, uh, important uh, uh, function because you talk about the effect of death on the person's uh, finances, mm. how the capital flow. You can see just on the court case. Right? It's mm. a very simple court case. The person died, the, the mother did not get anything. Mm. It, could have, it could have been well avoided. Yeah. Had a competent financial advisor look through uh, and run mm. through the scenario if you died tonight. We have to do mm. with estate planning. But mm. estate planning and concern consider a lot of three uh, sub-functions. Uh, mm. right? What you see from Google and newspaper written by journalists, uh, or you can go in Google, uh, the whole world, uh, 90% of the article uh, focuses on wealth transfer. Uh. There's a legal side. Uh. There's another two parts. No? One is called estate creation. No? In order mm. to have meaningful wealth transfer, uh, I, might, I might have a meaningful estate. Uh. Mm. Say I want to give something to you, uh, Samuel. I uh, say mm-hmm. I want to give something meaningful to you, say 100,000. Uh. Right. I must make sure that when I die, uh, whoever read out the will, uh, I have 100,000 to you. Uh. Mm. If I die, uh, I think I left only $1 for you. Uh. Mm. That gift has failed. Uh. Not meaningful. Uh. What can you do with $1, you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's assume you're my brother and you're in a special need situation uh, and you really need the money. Mm. Problem, you see. So therefore, uh, estate creation uh, is one part of finan- is a financial advisor's role. There's mm. a methodology. Which other, one. Yes, which there's a methodology. Parties- they the other do. professionals can't do this area. Yes. The moment you step into a law firm or the estate planning firm, mm. their fundamental assumption is that you already got asset. Mm. So a financial advisor uh, find that, hey, no, 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 no. There will be situation now uh, the asset not yet created yet uh, or not yet mm. accumulated yet. No. So okay. that's a financial advisor's role, no? Mm. Number one. And there's another one uh, in between asset creation and wealth transfer, in between uh, potential risk of uh, creditor divorce or lose a mental capacity. That other, area we call... Other we call, scenarios. That, that area we call asset protection. No point you no point you create the estate, like you accumulate like halfway through before you die, you go for divorce. Wow, that means 50% of your accumulated asset gone. What's the point? Mm. So there's, there's the element part of the asset protection in between of asset creation, mm. wealth transfer center is an asset protection. Ma. So, so this, uh, out of the three, three areas you talk about, the two areas is something that the financial planner's role is rather yes. significant. Yes, of course. There's certain methodology uh, and the processes uh, are how you link these three up together. Ma. I see. So therefore, uh, the legal side also, they are very in fact, eagerly waiting uh, for competent financial advisor to be in the estate planning game. now. Uh, because you know why? The legal profession, they are not going to sit down with you and do prospecting and spend two, three hours collecting facts. Uh. No, uh, it's not like that. Uh. All right. Mm. Somebody mm. must trigger off that uh, that uh, conversation uh, in right. a very professional way, number one. And number two, that back to our fundamental question just now, Samuel asked, uh, hey, to be proud of yourself. A lawyer cannot do uh, financial planning, just what we talk about, uh, all the mm. asset, liability, you run through scenario, how much insurance. They mm. don't have RNF code. <laughs> you see? I see. So, uh, so, a, a lawyer... So legally that speaking, they can't yes. do. They can't Technically, do, they can't do. Yes. Yes, yeah. the lawyer that I work with, uh, he said, hey, Alan, that part of it uh, you do because I got no license on that. Uh, I'm not going to risk my reputation just to what uh, pretend that I am better. No, the lawyer mm. also know. How no about the accountants? Do. Accountants. Pardon? Because typically, when people <laughs> think that anything relating to numbers, right, figures, oh, that's the accountant's job, right? That is the predominant thinking that people have, la, right? That's what about the, accountants? Yeah. That's why the viewers here, la, the accountants, can you... Go and please study CHFC or some of the course provided by EPAS. <laughs> okay, let me let me explain to but you. They may not, so to legally you. speaking, they may not be able to execute this as well because oh. also they don't have the RNF code. No, no. no. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. 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 <laughs> I, I, I wrote one of the textbooks for CHFC. Uh. This is mm. one of the situations that I want to write. Mm. In the past, uh, financial planning textbook has been written wrongly. Uh, because uh, they use the corporate accountant on uh, accounting mm. on go and put into personal financial planning and get every student going to study and protect as that. Let me tell you, uh, there is fundamental uh, 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 knowledge flaw in there. No, I pointed it out. That's why I rewrite the whole book. Now, from the corporate accountant, uh, when they take a look at financial statement, uh, all right, there is only one owner. No? The owner uh, is a company uh, that owns the asset liability. Uh. Mm. 
Mm. But that personal financial planning, uh, when we construct uh, the personal financial statement, uh, there are certain uh, assumptions with very different with corporate accountant. One, number one, all the assets are uh, inside your personal financial statement are uh, recorded in mark to market value. Number one. Whereas the corporate accountant one, they put it at book value. Okay. Mm. Number two, in personal financial statement, uh, some of the assets that uh, you see down there uh, might not belong to the client. No. I'll give you an example. Uh, for instance, myself. My mother, uh, because I'm a financial advisor, she will put money under my name. No? And then she said, hey, Alan, since you're in this financial service industry, uh, you invest mm -hmm. for me. Uh. The mother belongs to who? Legally belongs to me. No? But I'm holding in trust for her. No? In trust, correct. Yeah. Yes. So the, if you do a financial fact finding on Alan Lim now, uh, you will find that I got a certain amount of uh, deposit there, but it's under my name. Uh. Mm. What about it doesn't belong to me? So, so... And then and another you example is... You can't find that unless you really fact find deep enough. Yes, and of course. And realize that it's in trust. Yeah. Yes. Another the third example, sometimes some of us will own joint account with our spouse. Right? Mm. In corporate accounts, don't have this one. The other mm. part, uh, I, I cry very convincing, very con with deep conviction. Uh, it's liability. Uh. In Chinese, they say, 借来的钱迟早要还. In liability, uh, there could be more than one party uh, is liable for the same liability. You know? Especially... Uh, uh, mortgage loan. I think previously we studied this particular case study. All money open mortgage. Mm. We actually that that oh, that, that, was in, guys, uh, that was in the yes. first video. Yes. Check out the not first video. Yeah. Yes. Not careful. Uh, the spouse can get accidentally bankrupt or no. Uh, these mm. are some of the situations now. Uh, is uh, the established methodology uh, a personal financial advisor need to go through uh, and run through that uh, and come out certain effective reports. Uh. And right, come right. certain effective insights, uh, insights uh, essentially, yeah, essentially this this scenario, yes. the, the way the, the money will come into the books and is mm. very different from corporate accounting, mm. right? Of course. And and again, uh, this is the role that uh the accountant cannot play. Uh. It's a they can't role play. It's, it's not in the training, it's not in yeah. the training to do. Yeah. But yeah. therefore, as a financial advisor, I also wanted to say this part of financial advisor. You got to be proud of your role uh, and mm. also pay respect. Uh, to some of the fundamental methodology uh, of financial planning processes. Uh. Don't just collect the facts uh, for the sake of closing a case, pass the company compliance, receive your MDLT, you're happy about it. Really think through, uh, when we say financial ratio, uh, what does it mean? Really think through uh, when you collect the facts, uh, the asset liability. Uh, the owner, why, why do I need to understand the ownership structure? Pay mm. some respect onto the facts that you collect. Pay mm. some respect uh, onto some of the financial methodology uh, that you have learned. I say this in very without any sugar coat. Uh. Mm. I might offend some of you, but I think I will say it. Uh. Are you actually proud of the CFP or the CHFC? Or you just study, uh, just uh, wanted to make your name color more heavy? Because got more ABCD there. Uh. Mm. Now I say this uh, without any sugar coating because uh, as a lecturer, sometimes I got financial advisor can tell me, you know, hey Alan. Hey, this kind of financial planning cost nothing one. Uh, I, my sales is so good. Mm. I can pass it. Long. Within four months, uh, I pass all the CHFC 9 module. Then mm. I counter ask the financial advisor, no, look, you just pass the exam. No, you pass 9 module. You're very good. Uh, you're very exam smart. Uh, because he do more questions. Uh, try to spot mm. questions. Mm. And he's quite smart. Did you actually learn? Mm. Did you actually learn? Mm. Yes, you have passed the exam. Yes, yeah. your name club will say you CHFC. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a CHFC lecturer. I use CHFC. I'm not going to talk about CFP. I say CHFC. Yeah, but here's, actually here's, learn. Yeah, yes. here's where the I, I find here's where the gap is. Right? Um, we we can we can go through training and go through CHFC and all that, right? But where, where the rubber meets the road is when I really want to take this and actually put into application mm. on the ground. It's also something yes. not easy, like, Am I right now? Yes, if I bring back a case, uh, right? Not everything is. Contained in the in the books, uh, am I right now? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, correct. So, but anyway, this is this is <laughs> this is a gap. Another conversation there again. Another conversation. Uh, another <laughs> conversation okay. there again. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah. Okay. So so the the, the takeaway is this uh, The takeaway is yes. this. I I really uh, feel very passionate about this topic as well because you know um, a lot of our users right when we work with them uh, to put. Uh, when they adopt HQ as a solution, right? We work quite closely with them, and uh, we go through training with them and all that, right? Uh, I want to, I like I learned now. We we both feel the same way, now We exist to really want to see financial advisors and planners, right? Uh, to grow their business to the point where 
they themselves become accredited investors, all right? Alan, you mentioned that in the first video. Uh, yes. <laughs> right. I think there's nothing wrong with NDRT, la, right? Nothing wrong, nothing but, wrong. Uh, I think I it's think a better model is that instead of us chasing all these uh accolades, uh, mm -hmm. uh that there's a possibility, and I've seen it happen with a lot of very successful advisors as well, where we don't chase all these accolades, but rather the accolades chase us. Uh, okay. When we do the right thing, uh frankly, prospecting problem will go away la, because once the client regard you as someone that they cannot do without, you know, that means uh, they see you, to have you by my side going through life uh, will be an asset. Uh, they become that trusted advisor. I, as the client, become your advocate. In fact, every people I know, I talk to and all that, people I find important to me, I will want them to meet you. You will not have mm -hmm. prospecting issues anymore, uh, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, we have come to, in fact, today mm -hmm. I was quite willing to stretch it quite a bit uh, because I think mm -hmm. these uh, topics that are, they are of importance, uh, significance, okay, moving forward in the mm -hmm. near future. Yep. And um, also to give you guys a bit of a heads up, we, we also want to delve into uh, things like, for example, what is the impact of technology right, in the near future? Again, these are areas that a lot of financial planners think that, oh, no, la, these things will not happen. In the past 10 years, 15 years, you know, things are largely still about the same, right? Uh, but I think we do not want to hit with irrelevance, right? One day waking up and realize that, oh, we are, you know, the client is not talking to us, okay? Mm. Uh, and then it might be too late, okay? So in, in the future, we're going to talk about these topics uh, together with mm. Alan. Uh, I myself as a technologist will also offer <laughs> my, my insights, yeah. uh, right, from my yeah, research yeah. and then share with mm. you guys. So do look forward to that. So okay. Alan, okay. I, I really yeah. want to thank you one more time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, really for sharing all this. Uh, in fact, all these things, uh, you know, only people that used to pay you will get to hear, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but guys, you know, we, Alan has mentioned a lot that he's in education and all that, right? Um, but I want to point out that he's not talking theory. Uh, like, you know, we think that lecturers are always like, you know, talking theories in universities and all that kind of thing. Uh. Alan himself is also an active practitioner, uh, right? Alan... <laughs> Right. In fact, uh, knowing him, he he do he do uh, real complex cases, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's not dig too much into that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, the, right. the whole point is that uh, yeah, he's he's sharing with us things that he also practice in person. Uh, okay, so that's uh, absolutely valuable. So once again, Alan, thanks for this, and uh, really look forward to uh, having you with us in the HQ uh, financial planning conversation again. Uh, right okay. in the near future. Okay. Okay, right, guys, thank, thank you so you much. And uh, we wish all of you continue to stay safe, right, during this okay. time with your family. Okay. Cheers. All right. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.